Did he freeze? Yep, he's Candy. You're. Oh, okay. He's fine. Okay, Candy, yeah. start over. You were frozen. How's that? Okay. I said, has everybody had has everybody had a chance to review the uh, previous meetings, uh, the minutes from the previous meeting? Mm. Yes. Does anybody have any uh, questions regarding such? Any concerns? Any problems? Mm. No. So I just need a motion to accept those minutes, please. Mm. I make a motion we accept the minutes from the last meeting. Is there a second? I'll second that. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Sean, are you on? Yes, I am. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. I just I just need a um we had a vote to accept the minutes from the previous yes. meeting. I, 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 I didn't hear you. All right. Um we need to move into the next agenda topic, which is um um I, I, Froze again. Candy, uh, you froze again. What you may want to do is actually turn off your video to save your bandwidth. Okay, let me try that. Just turn off your camera and we can still hear you. How's that? Hopefully okay. that'll be that should help your connection. All right, good. Uh, the, uh, the other thing is uh, the ad next piece to get into is a uh, we have a um, a consent order for Dr. Barnett regarding unlicensed practice for massage therapy. Uh, yes, this is attorney Brittany Patano with the Department of Public Health. Um, you have the consent order packet before you for Dr. Barnett, uh, just alleging that he aided or otherwise facilitated the unlicensed practice of massage therapy. The consent order contains a reprimand. Essentially what happened is there was someone who previously had been licensed as a massage therapist um, and Dr. Barnett had referred patients to them. That license eventually lapsed, um, and Dr. Barnett was not aware of that, but because the he was still referring patients to them during the time period when the person was unlicensed, that's why we have the consent order before you today. And I believe his counsel is on the call. Yes. Yes, I, yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, and for the board, um, there has been discipline on the massage therapist license uh, through the reinstatement process when he applied for reinstatement. the board have any questions regarding such? Yeah, uh, this is called this is a question, question for the services. services. Mm. I'm sorry, you were cutting out. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I apologize. Uh, were the services by the massage therapist being rendered in a chiropractor's office or were they being rendered in a different location? Um, is the attorney on still? Yes, I am. I, be I believe it was in the same office building, but not the same office space. Is that correct? That's what I, that's the same belief I have as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was my question for that. Thank you. Mm hmm I don't have any yeah. questions. Uh, I'm ready to take a vote. All right, so we just, uh, does anybody else have any other questions regarding it? No so we just need a motion. We need a motion to accept the consent order as proposed by the state. I'll this make that Carlos, motion. I'll make the Go ahead, Gina. <laughs> I'll make that motion that we accept the consent order as presented by the state for Dr. Barnett. That is Carlos, there a second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So it passes so unanimously. Thank you. Thank uh, you. I'll email you the signature page uh, if you can sign it and then get it back to me. I will do that, Jeff, no problem. 
All right, next on the agenda is uh, new business. Um, and that is a declaratory ruling uh, that has been proposed by Dr. Aaron Siegel regarding a class two medical device. So I will, um, I guess Carrie is going to jump in and give us a background a little bit. So that's mm -hmm. fine, thank you. Um, so Dr. Siegel filed a petition with the board dated March 31st, 2021 asking for an opinion whether the use of some particular devices falls within the scope of practice of chiropractic care of chiropractic under the statute um your duty today is to decide what you want to do with this petition and under the uapa you have as you probably all remember because we've done a bunch of these now you have several options in which you can um, do which you can do. So one is you can issue a ruling so declaring the validity of the regulation um, or applicability of a provision of the general statute, the regulation or a final decision in question to specified circumstances. Mm -hmm. You could set this matter down for a proceeding such as a hearing. If you feel as though you need to take evidence, you could agree to issue a declaratory ruling by a specified date. You can decide not to issue a declaratory ruling. This one wouldn't apply to you and initiate regulation making proceedings. Or you can decide not to issue a declaratory ruling stating the reasons for it not issuing. You also have the option of doing nothing and letting the time of 180 days run, in which case the petition would just be deemed denied. I mean, I don't know much about the device and what he's really looking to do with it. Um, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Siegel is on the call, just to let you guys know. Hi, terrific. Hi, Dr. Siegel. Hello, good morning. Good morning, thanks for... So today's not the time to have evidence before you. It's really to decide what you want to do with the petition. And if you feel as though you need to understand the device and get more information about it. That would best be done during the hearing process. Right, how does the rest of the board feel about it? Um, All right. I there said, you how, hmm. uh, how does the rest of the board feel about the uh, the options that we have available? Hmm. I feel more information is needed. I'm not inclined to decline it at this point. I need to know, again, as you said, Candy, what the intent is, um, how it's being utilized currently, what the current uh, uh, research findings are, because I couldn't find much when I went and looked it up myself. So um, I need to know more before I go one way or the other. And what I just want to caution the board, um, Mm. with respect to petitions for declaratory ruling you don't want to be doing any independent research on your own you really want to have the record developed through a hearing process so right now all you have is a petition before you as well as two attachments and so that's what you should be looking at Hi. Hey, i have a question is this uh dr siegel is this the ultra slim program or device no, no, it's not. Uh, this particular device, uh, and I have some information I can forward to the board. Again, I, I only wanted to bring this in front of the board as a licensed uh, practitioner. I'm very cautious as to, you know, doing things without um, having things at least reviewed. Uh, I, I don't want to you know, risk my license or put anyone else in jeopardy of doing something they shouldn't be doing. So that's why I've, I've gone through this process. Um, but this, this particular device uh, specifically is um, helps to increase muscle mass, which we know core muscle mass and, and core strengthening uh, is very beneficial for you know uh, uh, low back conditions in general. Just uh, in assistance of weight loss reduction, we know that there's a significant de-stress of the of the spine, and um, so using this device as part of a wellness and overall health program. Uh, we feel will be beneficial to patients that are suffering with other neuromusculoskeletal uh, conditions. 
Uh, as we know, clinically speaking, you know, obesity, you know, overweight, uh, especially in the midsection, uh, surely causes stress and low back issues. So, um, so this de device, it's, it's almost like electromagnetic in the, in the sense that if you were to use muscle stimulation extensively on you know, rectus abdominis muscles and other um, areas of the midsection uh, to increase muscle mass and strengthen those muscles, uh, unlike doing you know, 30, 40, 50 uh, uh, abdominal crunches or other bridges or other types of exercises, this can be uh, machine assisted. Um, so that was the purpose of this device. And just to give a little you know, background, uh, you know, other states, New York, New Jersey, uh, there, there hasn't been any um, a problem with chiropractic licensing using these devices. I just wanted to make sure this was okay in, in the state of Connecticut. All right, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Dr. Siegel. Does uh, anybody else on the board have any thoughts or suggestions or questions? Yes, this is Carlos Pagosian. I The connection was a little weak when uh, uh, Ms. Colson was talking about the options. Do you mind just going through that one more time, what the options are in front of the board? Because I, from what I understand, at this time, we're not really uh, going to conduct any independent research as board members because I really don't think that uh, I personally don't know if we have the qualification or the bandwidth to do that but I think for the purpose of just uh, moving forward the proceedings do you mind just sharing that with me again one more time? Sure um, under the statute you have um, five well really six options you can take and you have 60 days to make a decision as to the first five. You can decide to issue a declaratory ruling you can set the matter down for specified proceedings. Generally, that would be a hearing. You can agree to issue a ruling by a specified date. You can decide not to issue a ruling and start regulation making process. And you can decide not to issue a declaratory ruling and state the reasons for that action. The other option that you have is to do nothing and wait out 180 days. And at that point, the petition would be deemed denied. So if the board feels like they need to have more information about the device, how it works, it, whether it's safe, that would be something that you would flesh out through a hearing process. I mean, I'll just, in my personal feeling, my personal feeling is that I, I don't know anything about the device, um, its intent or how it works physiologically. Um, and I don't feel that I could make a decision without knowing more information. And it, it appears there might be two devices as well, um, Dr. Karochi, based okay. on the way it's written. It, it's, a, it's one device. Um, it has radio frequency and um, high uh, electromagnetic uh, frequencies. It's a kind of a two-in-one device. Um, so it, it is one device though. It has, okay, well it has two different device names on your attachments. Uh, so are, you, are you just talking about the... Uh, it's called M-Sculpt, M-Sculpt Neo, N-E-O. And that's the only device you're talking about? Yeah, because the other one uh, uh, just had the one uh, yeah, that's the only device I'm talking about. Yep. Okay, thank you. And and, and I have literature from the manufacturer as well as you know um, some other case studies. I, I'm happy to send over whatever is needed uh, to the board to review some of the literature, uh, whatever whatever I can do to get in. And I'm really just looking for an opinion to make sure it's in the within the scope of uh, utilization under a chiropractic license. That that's all. Uh, that's all I'm looking for here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so my suggestion would be that we need a. I'm thinking that we might need a motion to have a hearing to, to flush out all the details and answer anybody's questions on the specifics of the device. Mm -hmm. I agree and with Sean. That's what it sounds like we need. Carlos, your feelings? Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, uh, you know. I would have to sort of just 
at the department. I know these uh, these uh, texts are ruling hearings that takes a lot of efforts and resources from the department. <laughs> uh, I know we as a board, we have to make the decision is the department's uh, resources available right now to start a dexter ruling really and go through this process because I know how much, how much uh, effort comes forward from your end. Are you guys okay to start something like this now? Or <laughs> well, be candid. Um, the department won't be prosecuting the action like you typically see when it's a licensee who's brought up on charges before you. Um, instead, the party before you would be Dr. Siegel. And then we would set up a process to accept petitions for party or intervener status. And those would be filed and then you could decide who else wants to participate. And the department may choose to participate or not participate, but they don't have the burden of putting this case on before you. Okay, got it. thank you. You're welcome. It would be like the FAA declaratory ruling we did. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the only difference right now is we may have to do it virtually. But everything else would be the same. Got it. Yeah, uh, I, I feel like, again, it's something that's a novel device. I, so I think to be better informed, it's best to go through a hearing process and initiate that process. Those are my thoughts. So, uh, yep. so, so Robotham, Dr. Robotham here making a motion that we uh, set a date for a hearing to uh, acquire evidence for the M scope unit proposed by Dr. Siegel to provide evidence. Um, I don't think I can be any more detail than that. And, and could, uh, uh, this is Dr. Siegel, sorry, uh, not to interrupt. Um, if you could just let me know what, what's needed on my part and how I can help assist, I'm happy to, you know, uh, get whatever data that the board needs to, or whatever's needed for the hearing. If, if, uh, and uh, I could do some more research on, um, you know, I, I'm not 100% sure what approved devices are already in place for the scope of practice, you know, obviously like, you know, muscle stem and uh, things of that nature, ultrasound, uh, diathermies, whatever, uh, if these uh, technologies all fall under the same uh, basic um, engineering or, or mechanical function uh, that would normally be used under with other devices just combined in uh, the same device. So Dr. Siegel, that would be up to you to decide um, since it's your petition what information you want to present to the board should they hold a hearing. Okay. All right, and sounds good. there might be other parties that participate or interveners, and they may have objections to what you intend to submit, and we would deal with it at that time. Okay. okay. Happy to comply with whatever, just to get, again, the proper opinion of the yeah. board before instituting uh, any um, uh, technology into the practice. Yeah, we appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so, so we have a motion. We have a motion. We need a second. This is Gina. I will second Dr. Robotham's motion. Good. And just to be clear, Carrie, we're not setting a date. Um, we're just setting the proceeding in action. Well, you could do that as well. We can frame the issue because we have to publish notice in the Connecticut Law Journal. Um, we have to set a schedule for interveners and parties, and you could pick a hearing date if you wanted to today. It's up to you. And how many days notice do we need to give everybody to uh, respond? Well, let me ask this. Um, so did the motion pass? We're still, no, we're still we're still in the vote. So okay. all those in favor, we have a second. We need to take a vote on it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 So now we pass. Okay, um, Dr. Siegel, um, they have 180 days to um, issue the decision, and if they don't, it's deemed waived under the statute. Would you be willing to waive that time requirement to give the board time to hold a hearing and issue a decision, a proposed decision, and then a final decision by the commissioner? Uh, yeah, so whatever it takes. Thanks. Okay. I'll probably follow up with an email to you and ask you to do that in writing so we can enter it as part of the record. 
Okay, no problem. Thank you. Okay, with that agreement from Dr. Siegel, um, it takes off some of the pressure for you to hold a hearing right away. Um, what we would need to do is decide who we should give notice of um, the petition to, how to frame the issue, if you want to set dates for intervener and party status and a hearing date. So it, it sounds like based on the petition, the way it's written, and it's up to you, you can vote on this, that the question would be, is it within the scope of practice for a licensed chiropractor in the state of Connecticut to use a class two medical device known as Amulsusculpt NEO? And you can cite to your statute under Connecticut General Statute 20-28. I mean, do we need to clarify that it is a type two medical device? That's in his petition. It's up to you. You could you could say the de the device known as a Mulsusculpt NEO. But that's how he framed his petition. I, I only took that language off the FDA clearance, the 501k clearance of the device, so you know, I just did just so you knew exactly what it was and what classification it was. So whatever, my whatever thoughts, works. My, I, yeah, my thoughts is just not to muddy the waters with other devices, which may be type two medical devices and just be specific as we can regarding this device. It's my personal thought. Does that make sense? Keep as specific as possible. Mm -hmm. Gina, Carlos, any thoughts, any concerns about that? Yeah, yeah. Keep it specific, specifically the device that Dr. Siegel has asked, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the petition for. So let's just uh, keep it very specific to the device. Include all the classification, the name. So, and that way we are clear on the decision on your lead. That makes sense. Uh, and I, I keep it simple and specific. So this is Jeff. The next your next scheduled meeting date is August 19th. Uh, may I suggest that we tentatively schedule that as a hearing day? And before that, we would be issuing um, notices in the law journal and to any prospective um, participants for the filing of requests to participate. And maybe we can do that, um, say, by the 1st of June, and then you can have a brief meeting maybe in the middle of June to rule on those. Yeah, that's fine. How many no, days? How many days once it's posted in the law journal do they have a chance to respond? Um, if I uh, the publishing date for the law journal has passed, so it'll go in. It'll be public. Um, it'll be sent to them next week with a publication date was probably two weeks after that. So we could give them three weeks or four weeks to um, submit their requests, and then you guys can have a meeting a, a week after that. That's that's fine. Yeah, that's great. So why don't we just pick a a tentative meeting date? How about the um, seventeenth of June? That's a Thursday. Yeah, works for me. Yep, we'll make it work. Go ahead. Okay. So I will work with attorney Colson on the, the notices and so forth. Are there any entities um, that you think would be interested in this process that we should um, send any communication to? A physical therapy using this device? I'm sorry, I missed that, Sean. Mm. I was wondering if any TTs are using this device, or how's that? I'm thinking you might want to notify the Connecticut Chiropractic Association, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, as well as the chiropractic council as well. Yeah, I was trying to think of their name. Yes. Yeah, both, both parties, absolutely. Jeff, does the med board need to get notice? Yes, they have a um, basically a standing request that they're yeah. just interested in what other boards may be doing, um, yeah. as as well as the medical society. Okay. I I don't know of any other organizations or entities that the board feel feels that uh, should be um, notified. But it's going to be in the law journal, so we may get other participants as well. Yep. And just so the board knows, right. the, um, the commissioner issued a notice um, in this case, and you'll be issue doing a proposed decision and not a final. The commissioner or the commissioner's designee will do the final decision. All right, so we are good with that. We're all set. Is there anything else we need to, need to do regarding that specific topic? I don't think. No, not that I'm aware of. All right, so we'll tentatively put in our schedules the 17th, and that'll give everybody enough chance to uh, review the, the and to file for petitions and respond. And when we meet on the 17th, we will decide uh, which groups are going to be part of that group, part of that uh, process. Yeah, when you do on um, the 17th, when we go through the party or intervener status, you can set dates for the pre-file testimony. As well. um, Carrie, one question, since uh, Dr. Siegel is the petitioner, can the board uh, designate him as a party uh, yes. right now? That's fine. OK. And, and I'm happy to uh, provide uh, any data or whatever you guys would like. I'll try and get as much data and information uh, together for you guys, okay? That'll be Again, fine. That would be That's perfect. Yep, that you'll pre-file before the hearing. Yeah, we will send you a notice of what uh, the process is and what you need to do. Okay, great, thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, the, the, uh, is there anything else regarding that matter? Otherwise, we'll move on to other new business. OK, go ahead, Kenny. Uh, yeah, the, um, and I don't think it's really new business, but I just wanted to touch base on some old business, uh, Jeff, on regarding declaratory rulings. Have we heard anything back yet regarding uh, from the physical therapist about their declaratory ruling? Um. It's being reviewed by the commissioner of DPH or her designee right now. So I hopefully will get something soon. That's the only update I can give you at this point. Candy, could we lose you? I think we lost them. Hello. OK, you back? Am I back? Yeah, could you hear me? I'm sorry. Now we can, yeah. Um, as far as yeah, the, the uh, physical therapist declaratory ruling, that's currently being reviewed by the commissioner's office. So the, hopefully there will be something issued uh, uh, shortly. All right. And the other uh, thing that um, I just wanted to touch base with and uh, tentatively we can put it on the agenda for the next meeting in August, Jeff, is with uh, uh, the um, National Board of Chiropractic Examiners has a program called Ethics, Boundaries and Assessments. And we were going to uh, try to hook up um, with Dr. Mike Federitz and see right. if we get to have him as a guest for that meeting as well. We can put that on the August 19th agenda. Um, early on and then have the hearing afterwards. Terrific. And 
cut out again. Yeah, he lost his connection again. When will it be our first face-to-face -face meeting? Can everybody hear me? Now we can. Hello. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm sorry. Um, I'm working off a hotspot because the uh, the internet is down in our office, so that's a problem. Um, but um, uh, so we're tentatively going to set August 19th for uh, Dr. Fedorowicz. Yes. <clears throat> and the other thing I was going to ask is if uh, uh, Carlos could give us an update on FCLB. Sure. Uh, well, the 2020 was a really uh, unforgettable year, but the FCLB was uh, really in a fortunate position thanks to the support that came from all the licensing boards across the country, including, I'm not biased, Connecticut. <laughs> I know that uh, there were numerous uh, power polls and uh, requests for information that came. And thank you, uh, uh, Jeff. Uh, Stacy and everyone involved and how you guys responded from what I've heard, you've been very responsive, so that was well appreciated. But uh, it, it was incredible that even though it was a really challenging gear, yet the Federation was able to support the member boards uh, in all the, all the challenges came across. Uh, right now, uh, some of the initiatives that we're working on is this uh, new program that's going to be launched, which is called the Recognized Chiropractic Specialty Program. One of the challenges that uh, the public might face is that you could have a chiropractor uh, go to a weekend seminar and get a so-called certification and call themselves a specialist. And that could uh, be a, a problem. So I know, for instance, our, our chair, Dr. Candy has gone to an extensive training to get his uh, specialty, and that was uh, thousands of hours. But uh, so the idea is that how do you protect the public by making sure that if someone calls them a specialist, they're actually qualified. Uh, so the program is initial stages. That's something that's come across uh, from multiple boards across the country. Obviously, telehealth is an issue, and. Um, you know, as uh, I know, again, maybe the department has heard about this already. The idea of uh, offering telehealth services has the potential for more fraud. In, in chiropractic, obviously, we're a hands-on profession. But uh, some jurisdictions, uh, licensees are doing part of consultation or post-care recommendation or consults. So if that were to come to Connecticut, uh, as a board, we might have to uh, rely and see what other licensing boards in other jurisdictions have done. And ultimately, that's the purpose of the FCLB, to become a resource center of sharing information and best practices. Uh, and, our, and our big issue that is becoming a common thing, last time in our last meeting, uh, Jeff mentioned it too, is the interstate compacts. And uh, the Department of Defense had uh, developed a grant to support professions who want to explore uh, getting the interstate compacts. Uh, and this was because some of the military spouses who are uh, healthcare providers, license providers, when they travel, their spouses have to move from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction, and their ability to practice was hindered. So the Department of Defense decided to come up with a grant the FCLB applied to get the grant to see whether or not chiropractic profession could initiate uh, the idea of looking into uh, a, an interstate compact, but that grant was denied. So this is something that might, again, come down uh, in the future. But again, overall, uh, the, the Federation is uh, in a really good place, and I personally... Uh, it's been the greatest honor of my professional lifetime being the president for the past two years. Next Saturday on May 1st, we're having our virtual uh, meeting, annual business meeting. It's a uh, com complimentary registration. It's open to everyone. You're more than welcome to register. Uh, I'll be passing the gavel on. There will be a new president taking over. Uh, I'll still stay on as a past president to, uh, to support that. But uh, 
Uh, again, as always, I always say that it will be great to have administrators, attorneys, board members to participate. And I'm happy to add, answer any questions if you have any questions. Carlos, uh, thank you and thank you for all your efforts in that group and we appreciate it and we're fortunate to have you be able to report back to us with that information. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else have anything else that they want to uh, bring up? Um, Jeff, we need to talk if we can somewhere about uh, our lay member now has missed two meetings in a row. I will send her an email that if she misses uh, meeting number three, she's uh, per statute considered to have resigned. Um, she does have, uh, she was provided with the agenda and the contact information, so I can't answer why she's not attending. Uh Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion to adjourn. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you, everybody, for participating and uh, stay safe. And thanks for joining.